Welcome everyone to uh, our first of a few videos that we'll bring you uh, in order to show you our virtual exhibit, Intimacy, featuring the work of Mary Hebner. Um, we're excited to be able to bring you art, to bring you new content um, from our bookstore and from our gallery, uh, even while we're all just kind of hanging out at home. Uh, this video will show you all of the books that we'll have on display um, and available for purchase. So feel free to follow up the video um, by looking at any of the links in the description or contacting us directly. The first book we'll be showing is uh, the eponymous book for the exhibit entitled Intimacy. Um, it is on the table before me. It's quite a beast. Uh, it is held in this anodized aluminum box um, with a marble sculpture on the cover uh, designed to look like an open book. Um, and the marble material reflects what's inside. So as we look in, um, we see uh, a really kind of stark setup uh, featuring two smaller volumes and a set of sheets on the back. And this um, really focuses on Mary Hebner's continual fascination with the act of discovery, the act of um, taking separate fragmented objects and putting them back together in innovative ways. Um, and you'll see that crop up throughout all of the books that I'll show you and as we get into um, a later video featuring all of her original collages. These uh, two smaller books feature first um, an original poem by Mary about uh, marble and how she interprets it as a living material. Um, it's designed uh, featuring a lot of her own um, uh, drawings as backdrops and the poem is printed in both Italian and in English. The next volume, titled Schizi, uh, features a suite of those same prints. Um, they are not originals, but they are uh, a limited edition number of um, reprints. And the real star uh, of this edition are um, the separate sheets, which you can see on the wall behind me are designed to be backlit um, in really incredible, incredible sort of electric way, showing the body um, as if etched in marble. So it comes with this uh, display easel, which you lift up right outside of the box. And then each of the sheets can hang separately or rest separately on the tabs of the sheet, of the easel, excuse me, um, which can then be backlit, as you can see on the wall behind me. Uh, their content um, is all uh, this exploration of watermarks, of poetry, um, and on the backs of each, you'll see uh, original watercolor art sort of as a reflection on, um, of the verso of the watermark. Uh, the, the whole volume is really a testament to um, Mary's ability and her um, range as an artist, the way that uh, a whole book of separate parts comes together to create a single narrative. Um, and it's extremely fitting that it um, is, is one of the highlights of our exhibit. The next book uh, that we're going to bring to you is called Cassandra. Um, and this is the other book that we are highlighting with uh, the collages that are on our walls, uh, which we'll get into more in a virtual tour that we'll bring to you um, in just a couple weeks. But for now, we'll focus on um, the book, which is housed in this uh, powdered zinc box. Um, and when you open it, it looks very plain. It looks um, a bit unremarkable, but it lifts out um, in this into this beautiful uh, first introductory booklet on the Cassandra myth. Um, and if you're not familiar, Cassandra was the daughter of King Prime of Troy um, and predicted the fall <laughs> of that illustrious city to the Greeks, um, but she was cursed by Apollo so that no one would believe her. Um, 
and her myth has been used to sort of uh, explain the um, danger of disbelief uh, and of sort of the the panic <laughs> um, of of a number of controversial things. Um, but the book itself um, starts uh, as a simple quarto and then opens into a long um, accordion fold of these fragmented images brought together into collages um, and set against a poem by Stephen Kessler. Um, and again, here we see that, that Mary Hebner is fascinated with um, fragmentation brought into completion, um, brought into a, uh, a steady and um, singular narrative to show um, the balance between myth and history um, and between kind of knowing and uncertainty. Um, the, the basis for her collages are uh, her own journeys where she finds um, these bits of ancient sculpture um, and ancient art and brings them together um, into these uh, veiled, unmasked um, images. Our next book uh, follows on the heels of the Cassandra edition um, using some of the same text um, and the same images in a much more um, kind of compact format. Um, it is a paper sculpture um, and you can see what it finally looks like in the diagram here. Um, but as we take it out, you can see that there are um, eight lines and eight pictures for on each side, um, and they pop up in the center to create um, a sculpture, just like that. In front of me is Apsara, um, which takes us away from uh, the classical Mediterranean and into the Hindu Puranas uh, with Mary's um, interpretation of the uh, Hindu myth of the turning of the sea of milk. Um, and it begins with this original uh, painted lid by Mary. Each copy in this edition has a unique design on top. Uh, setting this aside, uh, you'll find inside these two volumes um, which are similar but not identical. Uh, one is in French and one is in English. Uh, I'll pull out the English one for us to look at. It begins, uh, each has a watermark on the back, which is an original design by Hebner. Um, and they open into her retelling of the myth, um, which recounts how the Hindu gods uh, found immortality at the bottom of the sea. Um, and it becomes a thoughtful meditation on peace and conflict, um, on what makes the good guys good or the bad guys bad and how complicated that is. Uh, but really the beauty of it is in the printing, um, in the delicate watermarks, and in the secondary volume in which Mary has line drawings of the various gods. The French volume uh, has uh, the same designs but is printed um, in green. Mary has had two books um, that have received trade success and trade versions. Um, this one, uh, Pablo Neruda on the Blue Shore of Silence, takes um, Neruda's poems, which have also been translated into English, um, and pairs them with some of Mary's original paintings. Um, you can see the original edition comes in quite a large uh, seaside looking box, um, which opens uh, into uh, an original paper chemise and comes as a series of triptychs uh, in which Mary begins with the title of each work and they open out to present the English translation, the original Spanish, um, and Mary's own work 
all in a series. Um, and she repeats this again and again as sort of a meditation on the sea, of how we relate to it, of how abstract and powerful it is, um, and at the same time adopting um, the beautiful lines of Neruda um, and his, his own love of both humanity and of the earth. And so again, we see that similar, again, uh, reaction to archaeology, to um, the connection between humans and the natural world, um, which we've seen from start to finish in all of her books. Uh, similar to the Pablo Neruda, um, which I just talked about, is uh, Mary's book on Iceland. Um, which is titled Island, a journal from Iceland, and records um, her own travels there, uh, and is really sort of this poetic, artistic, geological survey of Iceland, um, and of how it has sort of risen out of the sea, quite literally, um, and is presented in a way uh, where um, her sort of geological watercolors uh, come out of uh, a land of poetry. So they begin um, on thin paper on which is printed a few lines describing a particular Icelandic location, which I won't try to say. Um, and from underneath, you'll see this um, sort of artistic impression of the landscape that Mary encountered there. Um, each one is really evocative of the volcanic landscape. If you've ever been, you know, it's quite a, um, a strange place to be. It's a bit volcanic, a bit, ba bit bare, um, and at the same time full of these dark greens and blues that Mary really effectively captures in her paintings, in her, um, in her work. The final book um, that I'll show you from our neat little library of Mary's works is called Seeking the Open Heart. Um, and it's uh, quite a simple publication. Um, it uh, features Mary's own um, art paired with some uh, simple poetry um, about humanity, about um, loneliness and um, our place as humans in the world, um, things like that, but it's a very raw uh, take. And I th think, and I've, I've certainly found that it um, shows Mary at her foundational level, um, that we have gone from the complexity of something like Cassandra um, with so many moving parts to something as simple um, and um, something so grounded as simple paintings taken from lyric. Thank you for watching our sweet little uh, unboxing video. I hope it was informative to you. I hope it was interesting. I hope it was a great way to spend um, just a few minutes of your day. Uh, and stay tuned for more content, more tours, and information um, about Mary's work um, and about our exhibit, Intimacy, um, which we'll have up until August.